Okay, this is day five of uh, um, one question per day, and we'll be looking at population density and distribution. Um, this is a February March 2024 past paper. So, first, you're given an insert. Uh, so, once you're given an insert, the first thing you should do is to look at how um, to label part of an insert, label part around the picture. So I've been able to label this part. This is a road and this is a vegetation here. I mean, sorry, a settlement here. People live in here. This is vegetation with trees. These are rivers and these are rocks. Then you have steep slopes here. Now, the first question is, uh, they say we should study the insert uh, of the photograph and use it to answer the set of questions. The first one is, what is meant by sparsely populated area? A sparsely populated area is an area where there, there is low population density so the amount of people living per square meter is less the second question is using evidence from figure 1.1 only identify two resources um, which would have been useful for people who settled in this area so two resources uh, that would be useful one uh, the trees and vegetation will be useful water will be useful um, rocks and stones also will be useful. Water, rocks, stones, water for drinking, trees for, as a source of fuel wood, rocks for building. Okay, now the next question is, suggest three reasons. Suggest three reasons, uh, different reasons why uh, the area shown in figure 1.1 is sparsely populated. One, is sparsely populated because if you look at it, it's not a flat land, so there will be no space to build and also the major road here is quite far away from the city so it's not accessible and um, also here you find that there is a steep slope and steep slope are quite difficult to it's quite difficult it's not accessible you can't you can't walk there easily um you can't move easily around steep slopes also it is there's dense vegetation here of trees and forest around the area so which makes it furtherly not to be accessible and usually areas like this there is less people because there obviously might be less employment within the area so there will be less industries here because there's no space for expanding the industries uh, the industries themselves so these are the answers to this question so you can actually pause and run through it uh, to consolidate your knowledge on this concept now, they said, explain two different reasons why there may be small areas. Now, small areas of high population density within large areas that are sparsely populated. So you have a large area that are sparsely populated, but you have some spot within this large area that are high densely populated regions so the question is why will some areas be have a high population density within a large area that is sparsely populated now those areas might be that there are spots that have water there are spots that have maybe minerals uh, so if there is water there people tend to cluster within that area because of availability of water if it is close to a road people normally cluster to that area that have a good road network because of accessibility so these are things you look at despite the area generally is sparsely populated but there are certain spots that might be densely populated because of what is found uh, within those regions so look at answers you can look at them one water availability so people tend to be clustered around that area if there's an oasis which is a small uh, water store in a dry area or in a desert people tend to be clustered there if there is mining activity there are minerals there a power source people tend to be clustered around there then if that whole sparsely area is pas is a marshy area uh, that is waterlogged then you find out that if there is any dry point located there people tend to stay around the dry point because the marshy area can actually be prone to flooding now valley floors in mountainous regions so a lot of mountains the valley floor tend to have uh, much more flat land that can be used for construction and building of houses area close to a road tend to be clustered or railway lines now the b part of this question is they said 
we have map of Australia here, uh, figure 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, showing different content. 1.1 uh, is the population distribution, 1.2 is information about rainfall, and 1.4 is information about mineral resources in Australia. Now, they say using figure 1.2 only, only figure 1.2, describe the uh, distribution of population in Australia. So if you look at this, First, anytime you are asked to describe population distribution, one major thing that is always correct is that the population distribution is uneven. That means it's not distributed equally around Australia here. So it's unevenly distributed. Now, you bring in um, your relative location, you bring in your cardinal points, the north, south, west, and east. Now, within the eastern region and um, the south eastern region here, you find out that those areas are densely populated. The central region and the northern region of Australia is sparsely populated. Then if you look at, you can now begin to mention certain areas. Areas like um, Queensland, Brisbane, Victoria, all those areas that are close to the sea tend to be um, densely populated. That's it. You get your full three marks. Now, uneven, always correct, one mark. High population density, people live around the coast, another mark. Um, few people live in the north, yeah, then Queensland, northern territories, blah, blah, blah. You just mention areas also. You get your full marks. Now, we have a five-mark question here. They said, using evidence from figure 1.2, 1.3, and 1.4 only, explain the reasons for the distribution of population in Australia. So, using this figure, how and reasons why population is distributed the way it is in Australia. Now, if you look at this, compare this population distribution with that of 1.3 and 1.4, more like you're doing an overlay. Now, if you look at this, they said rainfall. Areas that are densely populated, if you look at them, those areas have high rainfall. So, areas that are densely populated have high rainfall because these areas tend to have low rainfall. So, these other areas tend to have high rainfall. So, areas that are densely populated have high rainfall. And why is that important? It's because rainfall can be used for uh, cultivation, provide water for industries, water for domestic use, and um, cultivation, agriculture. So, obviously, there will be high amount of food produced within those areas now areas that are densely populated also have more of the resources if you look at this figure 1.4 there are more resources within areas that are densely populated why because resources then uh, mining of these resources tend to bring in more industries tend to provide more jobs uh, for the people so obviously people will move towards those areas because it will help to meet their basic needs so this is it. Most people live where there are most rain. So uh, as water is basic or is a basic need for domestic use, for irrigation, for agriculture, uh, which help to increase food production. And more people live in areas where there is minerals for energy as it provides employment, it attracting, attracts industries. So that's it. Once you're able to do that, you get your full mark. And also within the tourism industries around the coast of Australia. So you find out that the there is high possibility of having much more number of people within those regions. Now, for uh, for a name area you have studied, you should describe the problem caused by underpopulation. So in this case, we use Australia, and these are a lot of problems caused by underpopulation. So first, you should always try to give background information about the area you're talking about. So here we know that Australia have a fertility rate of around 1.6 children per women, and that have led to um, shrinking workforce, um, find it difficult to fill in jobs, healthcare, and the rest. So you can actually pause and read through it and see uh, some of this impact of having underpopulation. So thank you. See you on day six.